Okay, we'll start. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Can you share the screen? Yes, already, Guru Maharaj. Om Jnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksura Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swaminiti Namane Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Precharine Nirvise Shashanyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Vancha kaupata rupyascha kripa sindhu bhayevacha patita nam bhavanibhyo vaishnavibhyo namo namaha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadha Shri Vasade Gaur Bhakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare. So we're reading Mantra 17 of the Sri Ishopanishad. I'll read the mantra. Vayuranilam Amritam Atedam Bashmantam Shariram Om Krato Smara Kritam Smara Krato Smara Kritam Smara. Let this temporary body be burned to ashes and let the air of life be merged with the totality of air. No, now, O oh my Lord, please remember all my sacrifices, and because you are the ultimate beneficiary, please remember all that I have done for you. <laughs> Yes. Manaji, please send me as the translator. Okay. Okay, I'm doing it now. Uh, okay. Okay, complete. ขอให้ร่างกายอันไม่ถาวรนี้ถูกเผาถูกเผาไหม้เป็นเท่าถาและให้โรงพลานแห่งชีวิต Are you all right, Tosi Gopina? Is everything okay with the translation? I guess so. She's not saying anything. Okay. All right, but so uh, we were hearing about the nature of the material energy, how different bodies are arranged for different living entities according to their de desires. <laughs> So, uh, reading from the third paragraph of the purport, Prabhupada writes, But in any case, the material bodies of all animals and men are foreign to the living entity. They change according to the living entity's desire for sense gratification. In the cycle of evolution, the living entity changes bodies one after another. When the world was full of water, the living entity took an aquatic form. When 
Then he passed to vegetable life, from vegetable life to worm life, from worm life to bird life, and from bird life to animal life, and from animal life to the human form. The highest developed form is this human form when it is possessed of a full sense of spiritual knowledge. So we should understand the advantage of the human form of life. And the other forms of life, so many different forms of life are there. We said there are 8,400,000 different species of life. Eight million four hundred thousand species of life. And of these eight million four hundred thousand, four hundred thousand are human species, and the others are all different varieties of life. So Prabhupada talks about how for some time the world was full of water, so the only forms of life were in the water. But then gradually land appeared and with land then there was different forms like vegetables were growing. So vegetables, of course, vegetables are very low form of life. They don't have any, hardly any consciousness. A little higher than the vegetable form of life, you have creatures like worms which live in the earth. And these worms, these are food for the birds. The birds come and eat the worms. So the birds, they just, they have two legs and they have two wings. They can fly in the air. But higher, a higher form of life than the birds is the animals. And the, and the animals and all these other different species of life, they're all engaged in eating and sleeping and mating and defending. But the, the human form of life is supposed to be above the animal form of life because the human form of life is meant for more than just the animals. But 
in the human form of life, we're meant to develop, we're meant to cultivate spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge means to understand what is matter and what is spirit and who is the controller of this. So this development of spiritual knowledge is described in this mantra. All right. It's described that this, the body, the material body, one day will be burned to ashes. It will just simply become ashes. But within the material body, there is the, the air of life. And that air of life is eternal. The air of life comes from the spiritual particle which is within the body, which is the source of life for the body. So when the body breaks down, just like it does when we get old, the body gets old and diseased and we give up the body, then the, the soul or the air of life will leave the body. <coughs> so it's described here that the air of life will merge into the eternal reservoir of air. So within the body, while we're living in the body, we use the body to perform different activities. And these activities are performed because of different kinds of air which are within the body. So this air which is in the body, which is the cause of life, the technical term is prana vayu. Right. Prana means life or energy and vayu meaning air. Prana so the different yogis, some the yogis, they will know how to control the airs in the body. And the, those yogis who are expert in this, they are able to bring the soul, to raise the soul from one circle of air to another, higher and higher. And the highest circle, the highest circle of air is called the Brahma Randra and the, they want to bring the soul up to the Brahma Randra. And from that point, once he gets to the Brahma Randra, if he is perfect in yoga, then he can transfer himself, he can go to another planet. And when he gets to the Brahma Randra, 
เขาถ้าเขาเป็นคนที่เก่งมากจริงๆเขาก็จะสามารถทําให้ตนเองเนี่ยไปยังดาวคอนดวงอื่นได้ตามความปรารถนาของตน so ย้ายตนเองไปได้ He will give up one material body on one planet, and he will go to another planet, and he will enter into another body in another planet. ก็คือเขาจะสามารถทิ้งล่างจากดาวครอสหนึ่งเนี่ยแล้วก็จะสามารถโอนย้ายตนเองไปยังอีกดาวดาวครอสหนึ่งเพื่อได้รับอีกร่างหนึ่งได้ So so that would mean he remains in the material world. He takes another material body. นั่นก็หมายความว่าเขาเนี่ยก็ยังคงอยู่ในโลกวัตถุนี้ต่อไป But the 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 highest the best thing he can do is he should give up the material body altogether, not take another material body. สิ่งที่ดีที่สุดที่เขาสามารถกระทําได้ก็คือการที่เขาเนี่ยยกเลิกร่างที่เป็นวัตถุจากโลกวัตถุนี้แล้วก็ไปในโลกที่เป็นทิศไม่ใช่วัตถุ And instead of taking another material body, he should enter into the spiritual atmosphere. และเพื่อที่จะได้รับร่างที่เป็นอมตะถาวรนี้เนี่ยเขาจะต้องนําตนเองให้ไปสู่โลกที่เป็นทิศที่โลกที่เป็นบรรยากาศทิศได้ And if he enters into the spiritual atmosphere, then he can take a spiritual body, which never has to. Die never has to change. เมื่อเขาสามารถพัฒนาตนเองให้ไปอยู่ในบรรยากาศทิพย์ได้เนี่ยที่นั่นเนี่ยเขาก็จะได้รับร่างทิพย์ที่ที่ซึ่งเขาจะไม่ต้องพบกับความตายและความเปลี่ยนแปลงอีกต่อไป So that is the real goal of yoga. นั่นเนี่ยเป็นจุดมุ่งหมายสูงสุดที่แท้จริงของระบบโยคะ To conquer over birth and death. คือการเอาชนะ You give up the one body, and you never take birth again. You go to the spiritual world and take a spiritual body. Of course, the qualification to go to the spiritual world is that you have to be devotee. You have to have devotion. และคุณสมบัติที่จะทําให้เราสามารถไปที่โลกทิพย์ได้ก็คือคุณสมบัติแห่งการเป็นสาวกที่มีการนุ่งที่ตนเสียสละรับใช้ If we don't have devotion, then we cannot enter into the spiritual world. ถ้าเกิดเราไม่มีการนุ่งที่ตนเสียสละรับใช้เราก็ไม่มีคุณสมบัติที่จะเข้าไปในท้องฟ้าทิพย์ได้ So in the material world, the material nature. Forces us to change the body. ในโลกวัตถุนี้เนี่ยธรรมชาติวัตถุเนี่ยจะบังคับเราให้ให้รับร่างที่เปลี่ยนแปลงไป We're forced to change the body because we change our desires. We desire different sense gratification. เราถูกธรรมชาติวัตถุเนี่ยบังคับให้เราเนี่ยเปลี่ยนร่างตามความปรารถนาของเราตามความปรารถนาเพื่อสนองประสาทสัมผัสของเรา Just like little children, they don't have the desires which adults have. เหมือนการกับเด็กตัวเล็กๆเนี่ยความต้องการของเด็กตัวเล็กกับความต้องการของผู้ใหญ่เนี่ยมันจะต่างกัน But little children also have desires, but different desires. เด็กเนี่ยก็มีความต้องการเหมือนกันแต่ว่าแค่ความต้องการที่ต่างกันไปแค่นั้นเอง So every living entity in the material world has some kind of desire. We, we see the mosquitoes; they desire to suck our blood. Then. Even the big demigods up in the heavenly planets, they also have desires. Of course, different living entities will have different levels of desires. Of 
tiny germs, they also have some desires. They desire to maintain or to expand their existence. So, all these different living entities from the tiny germs all the way up to the demigods, they all have material bodies. They have the bodies that are a different shape, different appearance, but they all have some kind of body. So, if a person is intelligent, he can see the common features between the different forms of life. He sees the oneness in the sense that they're all spiritual beings with material bodies. Yeah, their bodies are different shapes and different varieties, but spiritually they're one. They're all spiritual beings. And that spiritual particle is a part and parcel of the Supreme Lord. And so it's the same spiritual particle if it's in the body of a pig or the body of a demigod. So everybody takes on a different body depending on the kind, the, what kind of activities we do. If we do sinful deeds or pious deeds, we get a particular body. Right. If you're more pious, you get a body like a demigod, and if you're more sinful, you get an animal body like a pig. But the human body is the most developed and it has the highest consciousness. And when one is in perfect knowledge, then he will surrender to Krishna. It may take, it may take him many lifetimes, but the perfection of his knowledge comes when he surrenders to Krishna. This, of course, is described in the Bhagavad Gita. After many births and deaths, when one is actually in knowledge, he will surrender to Krishna, Vasudev. But such a soul is very rare. Mm -hmm. 
ชาติหนึ่งที่เขาได้พัฒนาระดับจิตสำนึกตรงนี้เนี่ยเขาจะมาหาพิจารณาแล้วสิ่งมีชีวิตประเภทนี้เนี่ยหาได้ยากมาก so not everybody will come to that conclusion some people they may think that we're all they may understand we're not the body we may understand we're souls but they may not understand that they're part and parcel of Lord Krishna Vasudev Some people think that once they realize they're not the body, that they're the Brahman, and that they have to become one with the Brahman. And they think in this way they can give up their individual identity. So if the living entity thinks like that, then his consciousness is not perfect. Then he will fall back to the material world. He won't stay on the spiritual platform. And then even if he enters in the Brahma Jyoti and becomes one in the Brahma Jyoti, he won't be able to stay there. He has to come back to the material world. Because he's not perfectly situated. So in the previous mantras, we heard about the Brahma Jyoti. And we heard the Brahma Jyoti comes from the body of the Supreme Lord. And in that Brahma Jyoti, there are many, many spiritual sparks which are all living entities. And all of these living entities which are in the Brahma Jyoti, they all want to enjoy their senses. So sometimes, sometimes these living entities, they come back to the material world. Although they got to the Brahma Jyoti, they come back again to the material world. They, they come back to the material world because they still want to enjoy their senses. So this desire to enjoy the senses, this is the material disease. And when we have this disease, when we have this disease, this desire to enjoy the material world, it causes us to take birth again in the material world. We have to take, we go through all the different species of life. We said 8,400,000 different species. We have to take, we go through all the different species of life. We said 8,400,000 different species. 
So we never, we never find any perfect position in the material world. We should understand that entering into the Brahma Jyoti is not perfect knowledge. If we want to get perfect knowledge, if we want to come to the perfect position, we have to surrender fully to the Supreme. We want to develop our mood of being the servant and to give service to the Supreme Lord. That, is, that mood of being the servant of the Supreme Lord, that is the perfection of all stages in yoga. So we, we see how the living entity is praying in this mantra. And he prays that when he gives up the material body, that he will go to the spiritual kingdom of God. So he, he's, he, he, in his prayer, he prays to the Lord. He asks the Lord to remember all of his activities. And he asks the Lord to remember all the sacrifices he made. Because he knows that soon he's going to die, so the material body will be burned, it will turn into ashes. So, at the end of life, the living entity will remember his past deeds, he will remember what he's done throughout his life. And for somebody who is really in the material world, is under the control of the material energy, he will remember all the sinful activities he did. And because he remembers all of his sinful activities, next life he will get another body which is just meant for sinful activities. He will get the animal's body. So Prabhupada quotes a verse from the Bhagavad Gita which describes whatever we remember at the end of life, it will determine the type of body we take in our next life. So the desires are there in our mind, and that mind 
is the subtle body that will go to the next, that will leave at the time of death with the soul and carry our desires to the next life. Yeah, somebody desires to get a body, they can sleep, they'll get the body like a bear. They can sleep a long time. The bears, they can go, they'll find a tree, they enter into the side of the tree and they'll sleep in the tree, they'll sleep there the whole winter. Or some people, they like a body, they like to eat, and they'll eat anything without any care. They, they'll eat all kinds of terrible food. So they'll get the body like a pig. And some people are very attached to having sex, so they'll get the body like a pigeon. They have pigeons, they say, have, they mate many times a day. And somebody else is very attached to everything they have, they defend a lot, so they'll get the body like a tiger or, or a, a lion. So everything depends on what is what we're thinking at the end of our life. We have to be very careful to control the mind. Use the mind to hear the holy name and to remember the pastimes of Krishna. Don't just waste a life thinking only about the family and the relatives and the, all the material things. At the same time, we don't want to be neglectful. You have you have to come you have to keep good relationships with everyone, keep a nice relationship. But within our heart, we should remember that we are spirit souls and we have an eternal relationship with Lord Krishna. So this is the benefit of the human life, that we can remember these things at the time of death. We will remember the animals they want. The animals, they don't have any developed mind, so they won't remember things. 
ที่เป็นสัตว์เนี่ยเขาจะไม่มีเขาจะไม่มีจิตใจที่สามารถควบคุมหรือว่าสั่งสอนได้ But a human being we remember just like we have dreams at night we remember activities เราจะสามารถจำได้ซึ่งมนุษย์เนี่ยจะสามารถจำได้เหมือนกับการที่เราจะฝันในช่วงกลางคืนก็คือเราสามารถจำนั่นก็หมายความว่าเราสามารถจำได้ So we want to develop our spiritual desires. We want to think about our service to Krishna. When we can think of Krishna and we can think about doing service for Krishna, then we become qualified to get a spiritual body and to go to the spiritual world. เมื่อใดก็แล้วแต่ที่เจตใจของเราสามารถคิดถึงในกิจนาคิดถึงในการรับใช้กิจนาได้นั่นหมายความว่าเราเนี่ยมีคุณสมบัติที่จะกลับไปที่โลกที่ Now at the time of death, if a devotee doesn't remember his service to Krishna, Prabhupada said that even if at the time of death a devotee may not remember Krishna, Krishna will not forget him. ถ้าเกิดว่าถ้าเกิดว่าสาวกเนี่ยพยายามในการละลึกถึงพระชนาอยู่เสมอตลอดทั้งชีวิตแต่ว่าในบ้านปลายชีวิตเนี่ยสาวกไม่สามารถละลึกถึงพระชนาได้เนี่ยศิลปโรพานบอกว่าแต่ว่าพระชนาเนี่ยจะไม่ลืมสาวกผู้นั้น So sometimes me worry that oh some devotee he left the body and he was not conscious he was not aware what was happening he just died unconscious but Krishna does not forget him. So this mantra here, this is a prayer to remind Krishna about the devotee's sacrifices. But Prabhupada said, "He said, even if we don't remind Krishna, Krishna won't forget because Krishna knows the service done by his pure devotees." ไม่เตือนกิจนาก็แล้วแต่กับการรับใช้ต่างๆเลยแต่กิจนาจะทรงจำสาวกของพระองค์ได้สักพระองค์ Krishna has a special relationship with his devotees พระองค์ก็จะเนี่ยทรงมีความสัมพันธ์ที่พิเศษกับสาวกของพระองค์ and that that is described in the Bhagavad Gita in the ninth chapter ในได้ที่บายไว้ในหนังสือพระวัตถิตาใน A very important section in the Bhagavad Gita, from ta cha ta sloka number thirty to thirty-four. Krishna is describing how he helps his devotees, even in difficult situations. บอกเธอกิจชนะทรงช่วยสาวกของพระองค์ในสถานการณ์ที่ยากลำบาก So Krishna says even if somebody does the most terrible actions maybe his sinful activities but if he does devotional service also then he's still Krishna's devotee บอกว่าถึงแม้สาวเนี่ยจะกระทำในสิ่งที่น่ารังเกียจมากที่สุดแต่ยังไงก็แล้วแต่เขาผู้นั้นเนี่ยก็ยังเป็นสาวกของพระองค์ And Krishna says that devotee will quickly give up his bad habits and he will become pure and he will get peace แต่กิจนาก็บอกว่าสาวผู้นั้นเนี่ยจะยกเลิกกิจกรรมที่ไม่ดีเช่นนั้นอย่างแน่นอนแล้วก็จะมาจะกลับตัวกลับใจ And then Krishna says to Arjuna, 
Arjuna, I want you to tell everyone that my devotee will never perish. So Krishna tells Arjuna to say this because Krishna knows that sometimes he doesn't keep his promise. Just like uh, during the battle of Kurukshetra, Krishna promised he wouldn't fight. But at one point he fought, he had to save the life of Arjuna. Bhishma was fighting Arjuna and Arjuna got in great trouble and Bhishma was coming close to kill Arjuna and Krishna saw the danger. So Krishna came rushing towards Bhishma. He picked up the chariot wheel because the chariot wheel had come off the chariot of Arjuna. So Krishna picked up that wheel and he ran towards Bhishma as if to throw the wheel at Bhishma. So Bhishma had promised, he said, either I will kill Arjuna or Krishna will break his promise. So Krishna broke his promise because he he because he wants to protect his devotee. And Krishna's devotees mean more to him than keeping his promise. And so Krishna uh, saved Arjuna and in that way Krishna kept his promise that his devotee would never perish. And so then Krishna, then Krishna continues in the Bhagavad Gita, he continues, he said that anybody who takes shelter of me, even if they're of low birth, then they will get the supreme destination. So who are of low birth? Who are these people of low birth? Krishna mentions people like the women and the Vaishyas, meaning the merchants, businessmen, and the workers, the sudras. And so who are, the, who are people who are not low birth? That's the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas. <laughs> So the Brahmanas and the Kshatriyas there, they have a good birth, they're born in a high class family and so they may be considered very qualified to go back to Godhead. But Krishna says, anybody who takes shelter of me, they have qualified to go back to Godhead. Mm -hmm. 
เอาเปิดได้สูงทรงมีคุณสมบัติที่จะกลับไปหาพระเจ้าได้แต่นะที่นี้เนี่ยพี่ชาบอกว่าไม่ว่าจะเป็นบุคคลที่จะเกิดในครอบครัวที่ต่ำก็แล้วแต่แต่ถ้าเกิดว่าเขามันรับค่าเป็นที่พึ่งเนี่ยเขาผู้นั้นคือมีคุณสมบัติที่จะกลับไปหาที่จะกลับมาหาคาดา But especially the brahmanas, the brahmanas are very dear to Lord Krishna. Krishna really likes the brahmanas a lot. And then the devotees also are very dear to Krishna because they're his devotees. And then the saintly kings, not just any kings, but saintly kings, It means the raja rishis, the very pious kings. They are also very dear to Krishna. So Krishna is describing how we can come to him. The important thing is to take shelter of him. So Krishna says, "We've come to this material world, so we have to we we have to live in this world." And we have to live in a manner that we can serve Krishna. At the same time, we know the nature of the material world; that it is temporary and it's a miserable place. If we are thinking, if we are trying to enjoy this material world, then we will have a difficult time to be a servant of Krishna. So we have to do devotional service to Krishna, and how to do that service to Krishna? That's described in the final verse of the ninth chapter. Krishna describes four activities. He said, "Engage your mind in thinking of me." Then he said, "Become my devotee." Offer obeisances to me. And worship me. So four activities, not very difficult. Think of Krishna. How to think of Krishna? Well, hear about Krishna. Read the books about Krishna and chant the names of Krishna. And think of Krishna. Go to see the deities, and when we see the deities, then we also think of Krishna. And when we go to see the deities, then we offer obeisances to Krishna. And we also want to worship. Krishna. And Krishna promises that if we are fully absorbed in Him, then for sure we will go to Krishna. So this is the goal. We want to go to Krishna. 
อันนี้เนี่ยถือว่าเป็นจุดมุ่งหมายสูงสุดคือเราอยากจะไปหาพระชน So then, Prabhupada tells us how Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur explains these verses because these are very important verses. Oh. So it's there's it's quite a big paragraph. I think we'll leave that till uh, tomorrow till the next class. Okay. Okay. So we'll stop here today, and we'll ask if there's any questions. Okay. Question. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Yeah. Uh, who else? Ah, please, Shaya, come here. Ah, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Dhanamapranam. Please accept my humble obeisances. Okari to Sila Pavupan. Um, Guru Maharaj. So I need to ask about the Mikor. Um, they are under three modes of material nature. Or not, and um, can they get any karma, and how they pay for that karma if they can get Guru Maharaj? How they what? What's the last part? Um, um, if if they can, I if they may God can get any karma, and how they pay for the karma? How they pay for the karma? Hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Uh -huh. Yes, well, yes, demigods get karma. You see, the, bo the body of the demigod is given to them because they're pious, because they did a lot of pious activities. And that's how they got the body of the demigods. They're living in the higher planets in the universe. So it means they're very much more in the mode of goodness, and they are in the mode because they're because they're in the mode of goodness. They're considered pious, and that's how they get the body of a demigod. Uh, but sometimes. They do things wrong. Sometimes they make mistakes, just like Indra. Sometimes Indra becomes proud and he forgets that he is not the supreme Lord. He's thinking he's the supreme, and he forgets he's a servant of Krishna. <laughs> So. Sometimes he's because he's surrounded by many beautiful women, and he has a very, very beautiful wife, and many other young, beautiful women around him. So he sometimes he forgets his position, and he wants to enjoy material sense gratification. <laughs> And when he gets, when he does something wrong, then he will get punished, he gets karma for it. Just like some one time, one time he he killed a brahmana. Yeah. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it's described how Indra, he that their guru, their guru had gone away and left them, 
because their guru was angry at them. So his guru went away and left him. And so when they had no guru, they, ha they asked another person to become their guru. So the other person, they had the new guru, and he was a guru, and he was doing sacrifice, but he was doing sacrifice for the demigods, but he was also doing sacrifice for the demons. So Indra became angry at this priest because he thought he's supposed to be helping us, but he's helping also the demons. So he killed him. So because he killed a Brahmana, he got reactions for that. And then he killed another Brahmana. When, when he was fighting the demons, the demons had a, a Brahmana who was fighting for the demons. And Indra had to fight with them and he killed this Brahmana who was a, with the demons. And so he got sinful reactions for that too. So what does he do when he's got when he gets sinful reactions when he suffers? He has to do atonement, he has to do sacrifices, he has to do austerities to purify himself. You have to understand the, dem the demigods are not pure devotees, that they have pious activities, but they're not pure devotees. They're attached to sense gratification. So you have to understand the situation there, that the demigods are attached to sense gratification. At the same time, they're devotees, they're pious, and they're obedient to the Supreme Lord. But sometimes they make mistakes. Sometimes when, when people worship them, just like, you know, the demigods, some people are worshipping the demigods, so the demigods become happy that they're being worshipped and they will give blessings to people who worship them. And then that creates problems for them. Just like I told you the story about Shiva, he gave a blessing to the demon that anybody who touches, if the demon touches anybody's head, their head will fall off. So then the demon wanted to touch Shiva's head. So then the demon wanted to touch Shiva's head. 
จับหัวของพัสซิวาเองเพื่อเป็นการทดลองพรด้วยตัวเองได้ไป It was a big problem for Shiva สุดท้ายก็กลายเป็นปัญหาใหญ่ให้กับพัสซิวะ There's another demigod a very powerful person called Brigu Brigu Muni he's a great sage and he lives in the heavenly planets Naribo, Archana, 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 Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Maybe uh, internet issue, Guru Maharaj. Yeah, maybe. What happened? Where, where did you go? Oh, I think this connection, Guru Maharaj, connection problem. Okay. Yeah, I heard until you say there is another demigod. So I was telling you, there's a great sage in, in the heavenly planet called Brigu. So one day, one day he kicked Lord Vishnu in the chest. So Lord Narayan he got up from he was laying down and he after he got kicked in the chest he got up and he he told Brigu he said I'm very sorry I hope you didn't hurt your foot on my hard chest. So Lord, Lord Vishnu was not angry at him, but Lakshmi was angry at him. And Lakshmi was angry because he was a Brahmin. Brigu was a Brahmana, but he kicked Lord Vishnu in the chest. So Lakshmi cursed the Brahmanas from that time on that they, she would never bless these Brahmanas with any wealth. They will always be poor. So that was karma that came on all the brahmanas. Just because of one brahmana, all the other brahmanas, they all got reaction. So generally, if a devotee gets some bad karma, what should he do? He should just simply stay and engage in the service of Krishna. We should just take shelter of devotional service and that will help us to get rid of all of our karma. Okay. Um, Guru Maharaj, uh, I have a little uh, question more about um, if they may God bless um, their devotee about sinful activity, so they may God will get karma also. Demigods won't bless sinful activities. Um, Arjuna, how do I come up? 
หมือนกับว่าถ้าเกิดว่ามีมีคนขอพรเดมิกอดแบบเหมือนกับสนองเพื่อจะสินฟูอะไรเงี้ยแล้วเดมิกอดจะได้กามาด้วยใช่ไหมอ่ะคุณมาบอกเดมิกอดจะไม่ได้ให้พรประกาศไปอ๋อโอเคค่ะโอเค thank you คุณมาราช for your explanation Hare Krishna because we said the demigods are in the m o r e goodness the demigods are not going to sanction your sinful activities Oh, okay, Guru Maharaj. I understand. Thank you, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Okay, ha. Huh? Okay, Bhakta Kiti Khan, chale ha. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Dandavat Panam. Please access my humble obeisances. All glories to s h i l a p a p u p a d a Hare Krishna, k a m a t a j i Hare Krishna, ha. ข้อสงสัยของผมมีสองข้อด้วยกันครับคือข้อแรกเหตุใดองค์ใจปัญญามหาปรบูถึงถึงได้เลือกปรากฏองค์ที่นามัดวีปครับและข้อที่สองคือลักษมิปิยากับวิษณุปิยาเป็นดวงวิญญาณที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ใช่หรือไม่ครับแล้วทำไมลักษมิปิยาถึงลักทิ้งล่างก่อนครับคำคำถามแรกคือทำไมพระองค์เจ้าเจตัญญาถึงเกิดที่ไหนนะคะอประมาณคอยกรอนบัดวิทย์นบัดวิทย์ครับอ่านวัดวิทย์ใช่ไหมคะโอเคโอเคได้เออ his question is he has two question oh first one is Why Lord Chaitanya he choose to appear in Navadvip Dam? Navadvip yeah. because it's a dam. It's a dam. Dam is a place where he resides eternally. เพราะว่านาวดวิปเนี่ยเป็นดามนะคะดามแปลว่าสถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์สถานที่ศักดิ์สิทธิ์ที่ชื่อว่าดามเนี่ยแปลว่าเป็นสถานที่ที่พระองค์ทรงอาศัยอยู่นิรันดร A n a v a d w i p Dam is a place of mercy, so the Lord comes in His most merciful form to give the mercy. แล้วก็เป็นสถานที่ที่เป็นพระเมตตาแต่พระองค์เนี่ยทรงมาที่นั่นมาปรากฏที่นั่นเพื่อที่จะให้พระเมตตา And the Lord also wants to bathe in the water of the Ganga. แต่พระองค์เนี่ยก็อยากจะสอยากจะเล่นน้ำคงคาด้วย So he enjoyed for the first 24 years of his pastimes to live in Navadvip แล้วก็อยากจะมีมีก็มีความสุขช่วง24ปีแรกโดยอาศัยอยู่ที่ Navadvip He enjoyed being with all the devotees there Navadvip was also the c e n t e r of learning at that time, so Lord Chaitanya was a great scholar, and he he uh, preached there. He established the mood of devotion there. แล้วก็ตอนสมัยนั้นเนี่ยนาวดีเนี่ยเป็นสถานที่ที่ผู้ที่มีการศึกษามากมากเนี่ยหรือว่าพวกปัญญที่มีปัญญามากมากเนี่ยจะไปศึกษากันที่นั่นที่เมืองนั้นก็เลยก็เป็นที่แบบว่าเป็นที่ยอมรับมากในสมัยนั้น It's one of the favorite favorite places of the Lord. He likes that place, so he appeared there. แล้วเป็นสถานที่ที่พระองค์ทรงชอบแล้วก็โปรดปรานมากมากเราก็เลยเลือกที่จะปรากฏที่นั่น And he came to teach the chanting of the holy name. แล้วพระองค์ก็ทรงลงมาเพื่อที่จะสอนการสอบนาพระนามันสักสิทธิ์ให้กับผู้คน So by appearing there in Navadvip Dam, he was born when there was a lunar eclipse, or when there was an eclipse. So at that time, everybody was taking bath, and so when they take bath in the Ganga, at that time they're all chanting the holy name because it's considered an inauspicious time. But that's when Lord Chaitanya appeared, right at that time when everybody was chanting the holy name and they were all taking bath in the Ganga, 
because there was an eclipse. อ่าเหมือนกับเหมือนที่ทุกมันเป็นช่วงเวลาที่มันไม่ได้เป็นมงคลมากขนาดนั้นที่ทุกคนเนี่ยจะต้องทําสิ่งที่เป็นมงคล
Archana, are you there? Hare Krishna, Archana. Who is this Read Me Note 9? Who is this? Huh? My goodness, Archana, that was a long time you were away this time. Oh, yes, my laptop shut down this time. Oh, sorry, sorry, Guru. Who is this, Reed? Who is this 2169465619? Two, uh, oh, I don't know also, Gurmash. Okay. Chinese devotee, I think. Yeah, Chinese, huh? Yes. Okay, so I said the material body is temporary. We have to use it for the service of Krishna. Okay. It's illusion. But it's real. <laughs> so Lord Chaitanya gave us the philosophy of Chincha Veda Veda Tattva, simultaneously one and different. So the, the, the material body is Krishna's energy. It's given to us by Krishna. So we have to use it for the service of Krishna. It, it, we cannot say it doesn't exist. We, we need it to use it to go back to Godhead. เราไม่สามารถบอกได้ว่ามันไม่มีอยู่จริงมันคือมันมีอยู่จริงแล้วเราก็สามารถใช้มันในการที่เราจะกลับไปหาคริสต์มาได้โอเคโอเค okay. 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 Madhaji, yes. Hare Krishna, yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Uh, we were reading that uh, the evolution, uh, uh, that when the world was full of water, there were aquatic life, and then vegetable life, and then uh, worms and birds. Uh, does everyone have to undergo this evolution? And um, when, uh, uh, like, uh, uh, when the world was created, uh, there were there were also human beings, uh, right, to Maharaj. That's what that's my doubt. Yes, when the world was created, there were also human beings. Yes. All the different living entities were created at the beginning, but. When the world, at some point, at some point we have to understand that at some point the world is inundated and the world becomes covered in water. So when it's covered in water, the only forms of life which exist 
are the aquatics. Sometimes there are great floods. You know, sometimes at the end of the life of, maybe at the end of the day of Brahma, there's a partial annihilation. Sometimes, you know, there's these different things happen in the course of the evolution of the world. And sometimes there's a great flood and all the different forms of life, they're all covered in water. And only the things which are surviving are the things in the sea. And there's an example given in the Srimad Bhagavatam about Markandeya Rishi. Markandeya Rishi was given a benediction that he could live through the night of Lord Brahma. So at the end of the night, at the end of the day of Brahma, the night of Brahma began. So Markandeya Rishi had to live through that and it turned out there was a great flood and everything was in the flood. There was a great ocean everywhere, water everywhere, and all kinds of living entities were there in the sea. And Markandeya Rishi was there also in the sea, you know. And it was really terrible for him that he had to live through the night of Brahma. And he had to live through all of this devastation and the flood in the human body. It wasn't pleasant. Anyway, uh, we have to understand according to different times and circumstances, different forms of life will exist. And we see now how, you know, the, 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 the ice, the, the North Pole and South Pole, and these uh, big ice masses, they're beginning to melt. And because they're melting, the sea level is rising. And the sea level is rising and the rivers are drying up. So when the rivers dry up and the sea level rises, then that's when, you know, you ultimately come to the great devastation. The whole world is just in danger. Everything will be finished, annihilated. Of course, not everything will be finished because so many creatures live in the water. And so all the aquatics are there. But then gradually, then it starts to dry up and then the, you get land again. And then living entities begin to inhabit the land different forms of life come about. Of course, we don't see evolution, but, you know, there's the, we can see there is some evolution of consciousness. That, that all the different species of life are there, but there's a different, there's different levels of consciousness. The consciousness, for example, in a germ is not going to be like the consciousness in an animal. The animals have more consciousness than germs. But the germs also have some level of consciousness, but it's very low. And the tree, the tree also has consciousness, but it's not the, up to the level of consciousness of the animals and the birds. And the animals and birds, their consciousness is not up to the level of the humans. So there's an evolution of consciousness, not just, it's not evolution of bodies, it's not that the bodies are evolving to higher species. But the consciousness of the living entity is coming to a higher level. And that's why he takes different bodies. Now, he ultimately, he comes from, from the highest level, he comes down. So he's coming from the spiritual world. Now he's coming into the material where he's coming down, he's falling down. And that's, he's going, to, it's not that he's coming up from the animals, it's not that Oh, we are an animal and we evolved to become a human being. We were always spiritual beings. At one point we had a spiritual body, but due to misuse of the spiritual body, somehow we fell into the material world. And we come into the material world and initially we are in the higher planets, but we come down and down. Because we don't know how to properly use the highest consciousness because of our disobedience and neglect of spiritual principles. So we come into the material world. And when we're very neglectful and sinful, then we go into lower species of life. It's a punishment. 
So these creatures who are these creatures who are in the lower species of life, they're being punished. This is their karma. And we're also being punished because we're here on this planet, which is planet of death. This is a punishment. It's it's a miserable temporary temporary place on this planet. We have to understand the nature of the material world. We should be we should be very uh, determined to get out from this world. Don't try to just remain here and think you'll be happy here. No, just oh, economic prosperity, have a good life, be happy, live forever. No, we have to understand this world is temporary and miserable. We should want to get out of this world. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. I was thinking it's uh, easy to fall down, but very difficult to get back to our original position, right, Maharaj? Well, you just have to take Krishna consciousness. If you take up Krishna consciousness, it's not so difficult. You just have to chant and read the books about Krishna and then worship Krishna. It's not so difficult. What's so difficult? What's the problem? Because chanting is difficult. We, we are chanting, but uh, the mind always moves about and there are so many distractions. Uh, it seems like uh, even to perfect the chanting, it will take uh, so many years. Yeah, we have to be patient. I can understand that. Hmm. Well, we have to practice. We have to really practice faithfully chanting. It's not difficult. The chanting itself is not difficult. But you may be, as you say, to control your mind because distractions, well, you have to, you have to be aware of the distractions and you have to constant, you have to just put yourself into a situation where you're not going to be distracted. What is, what is distracting you? Get rid of the distractions or keep them out of the way when you're chanting. You know, try to chant in a place where you're not going to get distracted. Switch off your phone, switch off your handphone, close your computer, turn off your television. <laughs> so many things you can do to stop you from being distracted. Yes, good Okay. There are any more questions here? Yuvati Sachi has a question. Did we have it? Yes, Guru Maharaj, you okay. already answered Yuvati okay. Sachi's okay. That... question. There is a message in the chat box uh, from uh, Tulasi Mataj, Mataji. I was muted, something like that. Sri Devi Mataji has a question. Sri Devi Mataji has a question. Sri Devi Gorangi has a question, Madam. Yes. Uh, yes, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please accept Mahabal obeisance of Guru Maharaj. All glories to Sri La Prabhupada. Uh, my question is that I wrote it in the chat. My question is why is it that women are, have, women are considered to have a lower birth by Lord Krishna, Bhagavad Gita 9.32? It will be helpful, Guru Maharaj, for me in my reading circle if Guru Maharaj can explain a little bit here. Well, it's mentioned not only women, but also Vaishyas and also Sudras, right? Yes. And, and it's, we should also understand that in the Kali Yuga, everyone is Sudra and lower. So everyone is of low birth in the Kali Yuga. Why are women described as being of low birth? Because we, women don't have quite the, the nature of men. The women need to be protected. They can easily be exploited and taken advantage of. So it's important that women are looked after and given proper shelter. 
Otherwise, they easily get degraded. People cheat them. They tend to be kind-hearted, and that kindness and gentle, gentle nature can be taken advantage of unfairly. So these some reasons women are generally considered the weaker sex, that they don't have quite the same physique as men. Women get pregnant, men don't get pregnant. Women have to get pregnant, they carry the child. They need to be protected and looked after. So these are some reasons why generally we consider women to be the weaker or the lower, to be low-born. It's more difficult for a woman to renounce and to detach herself from material situations. Women all, they want to be married, they want to be with their families. They don't like to leave their families, they get so attached. This is why women are generally considered lower birth. It's more difficult for women. Some women can do it, not all. Generally, women are very attached, very attached to their children, their family, their home. The women like very much to see their children married, even though, even though the wife is suffering so much herself in family life, she wants her children all to get married. And if, the, if one of the children becomes a full-time devotee and devotes himself to God, the mother feels very sad, oh, my son's gone away, he's become a monk. Something like that. So women, they show that extreme attachment to the senses. So generally they're considered low birth. Yeah? You can understand? All right. Any more? Arjuna, are you there? Yes, Guru Maharaj. No more question. Good. That was the last one. I don't hear you doing any translation either. Okay, Guru Maharaj, because you keep on going, so I didn't interrupt also. But I was waiting okay. for you. You don't come in. You don't say anything. I think how long I have to wait on you. Oh, Are you going to translate yeah. or not? You're supposed to be translating. You're very slow to come in. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. Okay, we'll yeah. stop here today. Thank you all very much. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Yes. Guru Maharaj, Ki Jai. Go back to Vrinda, Ki Jai. Yes.